welcome to the Living Spiritfully podcast. Here is your host for today, Paul Gloro. Welcome to the Living Spiritfully podcast. I am your host, Paul Galoro, and I'm here with my dear friend, Claudia Miko, because we are the Mind, Mind Body Misfits. Misfits. Oh my God, we, <laughs> we did it. Right. <laughs> it only took a year. That's all it took. Yeah. Um, it's an exciting episode today because not only does Virgo season begin today, but I am announcing right here on the podcast that I have been crowned Canada's top fitness professional of the year for fitness instructor specialist awarded at Camp It Pro this past weekend. Claudia and I. Congratulations. Were, thank you. We were both presenting at the conference yes, this we were. year. Um, and then I was also awarded this. So you were there to witness it. Tell Live everybody and together. about me. <laughs> he was amazing. He gave a great speech. If you didn't get to see it, you could probably see it on my instagram page yeah. or my facebook page and you can probably definitely see it on his page <laughs> and actually if you stick around i'm going to play it for you all in a second but um claudia could tell live this yeah exactly but uh, why don't you tell everybody how amazing i was that day he no, was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> actually it was an amazing speech hmm. it was talking about how we need to come to the fitness industry with more love and more compassion and less beating ourselves up and he crowned Mo the <laughs> queen of <laughs> well, fitness. Well, uh, okay. I, I didn't crown her. She is already the queen of fitness. Um, True. But uh, but I just let it know, let it be known, because um, for those of you that weren't there, Patch said that Mo was the mother of the fitness industry, and I truly believe it because she has, and I have experienced that because she has nurtured me so yeah. much in the last couple of years, all the times I call her crying, Mo, I don't know what to do. Um, but anyways, um, it was amazing. But I just, she is the queen. She's the queen and now you're the king. <laughs> well, or, I don't know. I'm, the, I'm like the- You're crowned. I'm the, the, I'm the princess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's talk a little bit okay. about, because I mean, we're gonna have an episode of the Mind Body Misfits where we'll talk all about this. But uh, overall, like how was your time in Canada? Also, can we just acknowledge what you've been through in the last couple of weeks for those of you that don't know claudia lives on i don't know La maui lahaina. maui lahaina right where all of that destruction has happened a few weeks ago you were on your way to us i was on my way to the airport and got turned around because it was a big fire coming at us and uh then the next week no electricity no phone no service uh and very frightening conditions mm -hmm. i got up I was like, not sure if I was going to make it. Paul, you might have to teach <laughs> endocrine fitness alone. And uh, he was all ready to go. And I changed my mind. I found a flight. I hopped on a plane the next week. And my house is fine, fortunately for me. But many people in Hawaii are stranded. Uh, I've lost everything. So we are trying to rebuild. So um, what you watch on the news isn't all quite true. So if you need to know some truth, you can come literally dm me for some real information but i appreciate you saying that i yeah. made it here we got to the conference paul took very good care of me we rarely see each other live in person it's always once online so once a year <laughs> um fed me gave me because we had no we had like no nothing we nothing like, it was literally nothing yeah um so a hot meal some comfort a warm bed and, um, and some I chuckles. We and, had a few oh, we chuckles. giggled a lot. We were in Canada, I love Canada. And then we went to the conference, and the conference was amazing. Yes, um, I mean, seeing all of our colleagues that we have: Lisa Greenbaum, Mo Hagen, Lawrence Biscontini. Oh my God, ah! had so much fun with Lawrence. Yes, and we had dinner with him, which was we just did. always a pleasure. So, um, I'm and I had a glass of wine too. What I did. Wow, wild. One whole yeah. glass. <laughs> well, that's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Um, but um, I'm going to play right now for all of you that were not there. I'm going to play the clip of the closing ceremonies where everything was announced. So stick around and listen. Thank you. 
you. Um, I received this. Um, look how cute he is. Oh my gosh. Um, if you could please all join me in, in, I need to regulate my nervous system and I need your help with this right now. If you can all please leave your left hand, just place it on your heart. And you can look to the ground or you can close your eyes. And let's just all together take a deep breath in. And exhale. So that feeling right there, that to me is the magic of group fitness. Because like I said in, in, in that video, where else can you find a group of people working together toward a common goal, celebrating our bodies and moving joyfully? That's what group fitness is to me, and that's why I think it's really a step toward world peace. It's synonymous to world peace. When I walked in this room last year, there was a different vibe to it. And, you know, it was our first time coming back after you know, the experiences of 2021. And it almost felt like, uh, as I was walking through, it felt like we were all showing up to um, like a, a, a site that had been destroyed. And it was, it, it was a, an interesting feeling that as I was walking through, it felt like everyone that had shown up to the conference last year and this year as well, we've come back to rebuild this industry. And we can rebuild it however we want. And it is my hope that we can rebuild it with more love that we can lead with more love, that we can instruct with more love, that we can train with more love, to get people moving their bodies in ways that feel good. Let's, let's just put aside this beating of our bodies for working out and more celebrating our bodies for the beauty that they are, at whatever age they are, because to have a human body is really uh, something amazing. Um, this, this award is a great responsibility, and I plan on doing some wonderful things with it. So thank you all to everyone that made this possible. Um, I just have to say, Pat, you called Mo the mother of fitness uh, on the stage here on Friday. Mo, I, I feel it. You've nurtured me in so many ways. And it wasn't through all the conversations we had the last few years, and you said here today, but I just have to say, to me, you are the queen of fitness. Professional of the Year, and thank you so much for this opportunity. And I, um, I will continue helping people fall wildly in love with themselves through movement, through contemplation, and through celebration. Thank you so much. And that was it. All right. That was the thing. So thank you so much for being here for the intro. We have a great show for you today. Crystal Eves is here to welcome in Virgo season. Starts today. And P.S. We didn't talk about it, but we will. Mercury also goes retrograde today. And then uh, Dr. Patricia Rennie is talking about uh, why we want to do certain like cleanses and, and cleaning things out of our body uh, when taking certain medications. And then Jackie Talley and I talk about our love for office supplies. You gotta listen to the <laughs> whole episode. Please know that this was recorded before um, I was crowned fitness professional of the year. So um, there will be another uh, every episode from this moment forward will be dedicated to that. But uh, listen to this episode and we'll see you again next time. And now today to celebrate us entering Virgo season, we're here with Crystal Eves. Crystal, my love, how's it going? It's going really well. And how was your summer, Paul? Oh my gosh. I mean, I had so much fun this summer, especially Leo season was just amazing. Um, not gonna lie, I do love a good, you know, getting into Virgo season. September always feels like a fresh start for me. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but I'm just these last two weeks, I'm not I'm not there yet, but here we are. The sun is in Virgo and we're gonna learn all about it. You're gonna tell us all about it today. Yeah, yeah. I, and you know, Virgo's a really good uh sign to talk about when we're talking about astrology, generally speaking, because uh two things. One one that's kind of puzzling. Um, first of all, a lot of people who are drawn to astrology have Virgo in them, in their birth charts. They're either Virgo sun signs, they have Virgo risings, Virgo moons, Virgo Venus. There's a lot of Virgo energy um, drawn drawn to astrology. So, um, and why is this? Uh, because Virgo is a sign that likes to categorize. <laughs> mm. it's, it, it, it's all about sort of arranging the 
um, the, the reality and getting things prepared and, and it just sometimes discrete categories and so on. And so it, it really suits a Virgo soul or a Virgo mm-hmm. type, their soul to have a personality quiz or, uh, you know, a, different kinds of typing or different ways to categorize things or labels <laughs> to put on things. So Virgo likes to be ready. Um, but the, the ironic thing about this is that Virgo is one of the most maligned signs in astrology. Like, um, Interesting. it's a lovely, lovely sign. And, um, you know, it gets cut up a lot, <laughs> gets cut up a lot because <laughs> it's, it's very particular or can be rather particular about this should be done in this order and this should be done in this way. And, and this is, uh, the correct way to do something. And there's a spelling error there and so on and so forth. So, mm. uh, quite often, uh, you know, Virgo gets a uh, bad rap, astrologically which is very ironic considering it's a, there's a lot of virgo types who actually perform astrology so you yeah, think that we wow. you know that we'd be all very you know complimentary about our sign <laughs> you know, <laughs> about our signs <laughs> that, that show up in the charts and in our discussions about them um yeah. I, I have a really good friend um by the name of brad kachunas and he's an astrologer in the u.s and and he said listen the gift that virgo brings into any situation is that they notice what's missing. And I think this is a very good uh, descriptor for Virgo. It's like, if something needs to be done, if something hasn't been taken care of, Virgo will notice it, or if it was done incorrectly, Virgo will notice. And then this allows them to correct it, to, to make it, um, you know, function really well. So as a sign, you know, Virgo is an earth sign. It's a mutable earth sign. So it deals with reality and how to make reality work. Um, my experience of Virgo is that it's 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 all about preparation for Virgo. Mm. You know, like what is going to happen? How is that going to unfold? Who has the tickets? Who's going to do this? Am I in charge of this or are you in charge of this? If something goes wrong, what will then happen? Uh, are we ready? So when Virgo is operating really well, uh, they, they've got everybody's back in reality. Is this not like, um, I got your back, like you can come cry on my shoulder, although Virgos will do that for you if you need it. Um, but they're, they're more like, oh, I brought an extra water bottle because I thought somebody might be missing that. Mm. Or I've, I've taken care of this and nobody made the reservation, so I did. So the Virgo energy really takes care of everybody. And it's, it's, it, it prepares the space for, uh, for people to function well. And it prepares the space in, um, in the case of eventualities. And it, um, just recently I had the opportunity to go go to a Blue Jays game uh, with a couple of uh, a couple of Virgos and they were both talking in the car ride about how they just feel more comfortable if they know what is going to happen like what route are we taking where are we parking and who has the tickets and and then when they know this then they feel much more at ease and they can relax because they don't feel like there's something that's missing that because the thing about Virgo is that if they do see something missing they're going to feel like well I should take care of it that's why mm-hmm. Virgos end up doing a heavy workload uh, compared to other people. You know, I often say to Virgos, if I'm sp- speaking to them, um, you know, that the things that you notice, what if you don't act on it right away? So you saw the dirty laundry sitting there. What if you don't pick it up? What happens? And then they say, well, I usually feel anxious. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but, um, but if, you, uh, if you wait, someone else will notice it eventually too. So mm-hmm. sometimes that's a way that the Virgo energy can, can ease off um, putting every, putting everything on their own shoulders because yeah. they will feel responsible for all the reality that's happening. Well, um, I just, uh, so I'm going to kind of talk about some things. So for listeners, if you're not too familiar with astrology, what I'm about to say might sound really out there, but just stay with me for a second. Cause there's a moral to this story, but um Crystal, as you know, my Virgo is, uh, sorry, my Venus is in Virgo. And any of the literature that you read out there, anything written about uh, astrology always talks about how Venus is very uncomfortable in Virgo. And I remember in the early years of me kind of knowing this information, being, for, for lack of a better word, just being upset that, oh, why is my Venus got to be in Virgo? And this is the, the, you know, the placement that I have. But it was in a conversation that I had with you that explained what Venus and Virgo means. And I had a friend that was uh, Virgo. Before I even like really got deeper into astrology, I would always say to her, you know, you really like things in a particular way. And that's kind of like now what I keep on thinking of with uh, Virgo. But um, 
now that I understand Virgo a little bit more and I understand Venus and I've been, you know, playing with Venus and she's been talking to me a lot the last little while. So I feel like she and I have built this relationship. I understand my Venus in Virgo and it makes sense why, for whatever reason, I need everything to be in order before I can relax and yeah you know, sit down and enjoy company or that's why when I'm like hosting parties, I'm like getting up every five seconds because I want to make sure that, that everyone's well taken care of. And yeah. once everyone's taken care of, then I can kind of relax and be in the moment. Um, and I didn't really appreciate that until you and I, until you kind of laid it out there for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a Virgo drive to like, if, if you've ever gone to go on a holiday and you're packing for the holiday and, and before you go you clean out your fridge and vacuum the house mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like a virgo urge now you don't have to be a virgo sun sign to have that urge right. but you might probably have things in virgo in your chart if you do have an urge like that which is like i just need to get everything prepared and and, and here's an ironic thing too because there are there are uh, virgos who are not neat and tidy and who don't uh keep everything all tickety boo um mm. but they but they're aware that they struggle in this area if they if they even feel they do struggle in in this area um but usually it has something to do with really wanting to get it right oh so i'll put that away later when i can put it in the proper place so then it sits on the table and then you know another thing sits on the table well, i'll put them you know, when i have when i have time to do it properly so sometimes the virgo you, sometimes you can walk into a the house of a virgo and think you're going to expect to see like Felix Unger's house from the odd couple. And what you see instead is like Oscar Madison, the other, the other one, uh, where it's just all piled up everywhere. And that can happen with Virgo too. So, so, um, and it's, and it's about the detail with which they want to really address whatever it is they're doing. And, mm -hmm. and so sometimes that can really bog the Virgo energy down is like, sometimes they can get lost in the weeds and it, with everything, it's like, not just material things placed around the house, but just with ideas and think, okay, like, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to, I have to do this first and this, this, and this, and they get really into the little details and forget like, oh yeah, just, just take a couple steps, just take, mm -hmm. take a couple steps forward. So that can be something that the Virgo energy struggles with a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, and now you saying that totally makes sense about a lot of things with me as well. And <laughs> placing things down and, you know, not putting them away because I, yeah, I always wait for the right moment. And then I just do it properly. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> is like, um, you and I share a Venus and Virgo, right? I, I have that too. And, um, you know, I won't, my, all my CDs are alphabetized, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there's pleasure and there's pleasure with Venus is pleasure, right? So there's pleasure in having yeah. order with, with that. Yeah. And I, I just yeah. remarking oh my God. Exactly. about your, your books on your bookshelf there. Uh, they're all color coordinated mm -hmm. and, and uh, via like the yeah. home edit. And it's like, that's such a Virgo thing to have like a theme and a way to do things. And of course you couldn't just randomly mm -hmm. put a book back, right? You'd have to put it in the proper space to, and exactly. that's, that's what Virgo energy is <laughs> about the proper uh, thing to do or the correct thing. So, so people have got strong Virgo, whether they're Virgo sun signs or have other planets in Virgo, particularly moon uh, types. Um, they like to, keep record of things. They like to categorize things. They like to analyze things, break them down, understand it. It is a, it's a really good right hand man sort of uh, energy, right? Be, and, and, uh, mm. You could be right hand man to yourself because, uh, because right. if you have some other part of your personality that goes, this is the goal I want to chase. Then the Virgo goes, all right, that's what we're chasing. This is who we have to call. This is when we have to do it. To put that on the calendar, do this, that, that. And you can really be very, very effective in the world if you've got a lot of um, Virgo that's working well for you in the chart. Yeah, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. Virgos these mm. days have been, th th this is the like, I don't know, it's like um, heavy traffic through Virgo or uh, connecting to Virgo astrologically these last few years. And um, when when we look at, astrology and like what's going on with a particular sign uh there's basically five really big cycles that we would look at all five of these cycles have been active in virgo uh, so they're not necessarily happening in virgo but they're connecting to virgo so they're they're active for virgo is how i should probably phrase it and um it, it means okay. that the Virgos have been going through a lot of change and some of it's been really exciting and full of growth and very very expansive and the 
uh, other for others, it's been a little bit, um, uh, what's the word I want to say, uh, concerning because it, it because it has been challenging the Virgo way of being. Like so, for example, for Virgos who are born like the sixteenth um, to the twenty second of September. That, that group, they're having this cycle that's going on, which is really challenging them to get out of their Virgo-ness and mm -hmm. into a more Piscean way of being, which is more flowing, which is not, doesn't have the details it wants. It's sort of missing information and it has to be in the moment and let things evolve without a plan. And Virgo doesn't like this. And so a lot of that group have been uh, operating like, well, I can't make a decision about this until that happens. And that hasn't happened yet. So I don't know. So what, what are you doing? They're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm coming or going. I don't know how to navigate this time. And that can be really, really hard for Virgo. Um, for those groups, for those, for those Virgo types, uh, I'll just say to them, like, let your plan be to just hang in the moment for a while. And mm. then you're like, you have a plan, you're not like aimless. Um, and then just like, let it play out for a year and a half and see where it takes you and then make a concrete plan. And then that will feel more comfortable, like a more on solid ground for, right. for that group. Um, there's the, the early group of, of Virgo born um, from today to about the 7th of September, uh, today being August 23rd. Um, the, the, that group has been in an um, important sort of phase change of life. So they've maybe had to commit to something this year or, or get really serious about something. They've got Saturn opposing their sun right now. So this means that they're getting ready to move into next stages and getting ready to um, launch some new thing. And it usually means hard work, sleeves rolled up. People will do things like they get married, they'll buy a house, they'll have a child, they get a new job, they'll graduate something. It's like, so there's a lot of that achievement related stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for the rest of the signs, it's been, it's more pleasant. <laughs> for the rest of the sign, you know, like in those dates that I didn't mention, they're getting more expansive growth, um, exciting kinds of empowerment types of things that are happening, which okay. um, I should mention that the first group I said toward the end of uh, Virgo, they're mm -hmm. getting a lot of like something really good will come out of that confusion. Something really, really empowering will come out of that for them. And that's building, that's a cycle that's building simultaneously with that, that sort of let go the reins kind of a request that life mm. is making of them uh, in this moment. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Wow. I mean, so I want, first of all, I want to call every Virgo that I know, see how they're doing. Um, but just to recap, you said the first couple of days of Virgo was that second group that you were talking about. And then the last bit of Virgo was that first group that you were talking about. Yeah. And in okay. between that, like, um, part of that first group is also getting a really good, um, well, I want to say first group, but the early group is what I mean to say mm -hmm. that I spoke of second, uh, that early group, they're getting a big sort of push to expand also. So, mm. um, it, that'll be for the next couple of years. Virgo is going to be in a growth mode for a couple of years. So there can be some really big, exciting things that are happening for this, this whole group. Um, and it can be enlivening and it can be um, like pushing them outside of their comfort zone in a really good way, like towards things they didn't even realize they wanted, the stretching mm. them. So that can be great, but that comes with some work. That's why it's, that's why it's sort of peppered with the other stuff too. Right. Here's an interesting thing. You know, it's it's represented by the Virgin, right? So, um, and also like the harvest has something to do with Virgo as well. Mm. Uh, but um, a Toronto area astrologer, um, Julie Simmons, uh, she had said that the virgins were who prepared the altar for the ritual. You know, they got things ready. And um, the, like, I guess... I don't know if she's talking about the Vestal Virgins or what, but she basically, this is the archetype of Virgo is that in preparation, in the mm. preparation for the event that will be happening. So you'll see Virgo a lot. If you talk to people who've got strong Virgo, you say, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to, you know, they're very good at sort of mm -hmm. getting ready to get things going. And then that's where their real strong suit happens to be is in that getting everything ready. Um, but they might lose interest once everything's ready to go. You know, once once yeah. it's all prepared and ready, because the, the the archetype is is about preparation. It's not about right. execution. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh, Crystal. I mean, I just want to sit and talk with you for hours all day, every day. Um, I, Cause I mean, my mind is always blown about things that you say um, just about the archetypes and about how it all applies to my life. So um, it's a fun topic. You. Astrology is, it is, it yeah. is. And I mean, um, since we're entering Virgo, we've entered Virgo season today. And uh, at the end of September, I'm going to share this now. I'm deepening my study and knowledge of astrology. I'm taking a foundations course, thanks to you and your uh, encouragement, um, through the Center of Psychological Astrology. I'm, um, I'm so, so excited for you. I'm yeah. so excited because I, I, I uh, you know, I've taken a few like seminars with with that group out of England myself, and mm. they do some really great like in depth archetypal astrology. You're gonna love it. I hope yeah. you're gonna tell us more about oh, this a thousand percent. as it as it unfolds, and uh, because uh, I think you're gonna really enjoy whatever they're teaching you there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely I'm super excited. And I mean, you and I are going to be having more of these conversations because um, I'm just gonna need to talk all about it. So yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm yeah. here for you for that. Awesome. For sure. For sure. Awesome. I love you. Well, enjoy Virgo season. Um, oh, you know what we forgot to mention, but we're going to have a bonus episode all about this next week with our group from way of the sun. But yes. we are opening registration again for people to join us. Mm-hmm come Libra season, because once we get to Libra season, we're learning about the second half of the Zodiac. And uh, so anybody that wants to join in and continue learning with us, they'll have access to the first half, um, but then they can continue with us. So uh, head over to the show's notes um, for more information. What were you And how long are we going to keep that window open for registration? Uh, we're only open for uh, for Virgo season until uh, Libra starts, and maybe, until Libra, maybe so just for the next four weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so if anybody's interested, get in on it now because then you can join us once we're ready for our Libra season, um, and you'll have access to everything that you can go back and catch up. But uh, yeah, anybody yeah. interested in astrology, check it out. Shows notes is where you're going to get all those links to find out more. Wonderful. Crystal Eves, I love you so much. Love you right back, Paul. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of summer. And we're going to see you again. Um, Actually, we're going to, we're going to, you're going to be part of the group that we're going to meet with next week. Yeah. We'll we'll talk then. Okay. Love you. Super. Love you too. Bye. Now from talking about Virgo, we are here with Dr. Patricia Rennie. Hi, Dr. Pat. How's it going? Good, Paul. How are you doing? Wonderful. Thank you. Summer is coming to an end. But this is like an exciting time for the garden, right? Because a lot of stuff is happening. It, I can't even begin to keep up. I'm just giving stuff away left, right, and center at this point. <laughs> i got to make sure to come by your place then when you're doing that. Uh, yeah. So last month we talked about the liver. And in that, um, that conversation, you talked about how uh, the liver filters out a lot of toxins. And sometimes we pick up things from certain medications. And today we're talking about nutrient deficiency caused by medication, correct? Absolutely. Yes. So I wanted to, I wanted to address this because I think it's something that's really under, under considered, right? It's not something that we think about a lot. And um, I think it's really important. So the point of this is that I often have patients come in, you know, they're, they're taking various medications and they come in, which is fine. And They'll say, our, our puppies are talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> They'll say, um, oh yeah, well, I'm taking such and such, but that's okay. It doesn't cause me, I have no side effects from it. It's fine. So there are like the really obvious side effects that we get when we start a medication, particularly at the beginning, right? Which, you know, sometimes those things settle out and sometimes they don't. So we need to change to another medication uh, or stop it altogether. But this is kind of like, an insidious side effect because all chemical medications, well, they all cause side effects and they all have to be processed as we talked about earlier through the liver and that metabolism through our system requires nutrients or some of those medications, you know, we talked last time a little bit about, um, Things like proton pump inhibitors, which suppress acid for people who have GERD or reflux, their acids being 
suppressed, which means they're not as able to digest and absorb their nutrients, that can cause nutritional deficiencies. The one that we're talking more about today is how as a medication is processed through my system, through my liver, what nutrients does my body need to pull on to do that processing? And so when we take something like an antibiotic for 10 days or an antihistamine for a few days, you know, that's a short lived medication. It's going to still do that, but not forever because we're not going to take it forever. But some of the other medications that we take for a long period of time, or we take multiple medications for a long period of time, means that those those tiny little nutrient depletions are happening over and over and over and over for a very long time, Mm -hmm. creating a chronicity that we may not notice and we may not uh, relate to the medications and we may not be getting enough nutrients in our food to compensate for that. Okay. So there are there are there are books, there are references, you can go online, there are there are lots of great resources where you can plug in the medication you're taking and find out which nutrients it depletes. Hmm. So I think it's important to do that whenever you're taking a medication, especially if it's long term. The ones that come up for me the most often, I would say, are the statin drugs because those are the cholesterol lowering drugs. And, you know, when you get to be particularly our age and a little bit older, a lot of people are taking these medications. And when they start these medications, they're told that they're going to be on them for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So what we know for sure, and we've known this for a very long time, is that statin medications deplete CoQ10, coenzyme Q10. So a coenzyme is kind of like, it's like the plus sign in A plus B equals C. Like you can't get to the C without the plus sign. So a coenzyme is what helps to run these pathways that need to run in the body. And CoQ10 is particularly dense in our gums and in our heart. And we need it. We actually need it to make energy for the heart. So here we are giving a medication to reduce cholesterol and hopefully prevent a cardiovascular incident at the same time that we're depleting a nutrient that the heart needs to make energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the research that uh, most recently that I heard about was, if I quote it properly, that if you have, um, I think if if a hundred people have heart attacks, not on, that are on statins have a heart attack, eighty of them die, versus a hundred people on statins have a heart attack with CoQ10, only twenty of them die, huh. because the energy production in the heart is there. Okay. So. Truly, in the same way that I think, you know, if you're given an antibiotic, you should be given a probiotic. When you're given a statin, you should be told to take CoQ10. Okay. That's a big one because a lot of people take it and they take it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. The other one that's really big is the birth control pill. Because I think the number is something like 100 million women worldwide are taking the birth control pill at any time. And they're usually taking it for years at a time and sometimes Mm -hmm. decades at a time. The birth control pill depletes more nutrients than any other medication on the planet. Wow. Wow. And I'm pretty sure that most women are not being told that when they start it. Right. Right. They're told to watch out for X, Y, and Z side effects, but probably not that it's depleting most of your B vitamins vitamin C, vitamin E, folic acid, zinc, and magnesium. Well, and we've talked about some of those all very important uh, nutrients that we need just for daily function. Exactly. So I'm not, you know, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if you take a multivitamin that, um, you know, will make up for it because there'll be a little bit of everything in that multivitamin. I'm not huge on multivitamins, but maybe if you're taking something like the birth control pill, it's a good idea to do that, especially if you can't manage to get a really good, wholesome diet all the time. Mm. 
Okay. And then, um, of course, when we're looking at our medications and seeing what nutrients are being depleted, we want to really focus on getting most of that from our diet as best as we can and then supplementing where we don't make up for it so that we can have the amount that we need so that our body can still keep doing what it's doing and not be deficient of these nutrients. Right. Because as soon as you're deficient in, you know, it's, it's like the A plus B equals C, uh, as soon as you're deficient in A, it doesn't matter if you have everything else, then you're, there's a whole bunch of other pathways that can't be run. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a very, there's... very complicated, uh, graphic that goes on the wall where you get to see all these interactions it gives me anxiety every time yeah oh i bet um and i guess it's also like uh, one of the things that i'm thinking and this is just with deficiency in general it has nothing to do with medication is water intake if we're not getting enough water there's so many processes within our body that aren't functioning the way that they're meant yeah. to so this is one of the reasons why we want to drink so much water and now it's like we look at this we look at at, at uh, the nutrient deficiency from medication and so we want to make sure that we're, you know, getting enough of those nutrients like hydration. So, yes. Okay. So maybe we talked last, this is a sidebar, but we talked last time about doing a talk on castor oil. Maybe one day we'll do a talk on water. Yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. I think we definitely need to do that. All right. I'm making a list. This will be for okay. the fall season. What we're going to talk about, unless <laughs> how much, how, how, how much more are we talking about uh, the blood work stuff? Yeah. So I think. I think I'm kind of wrapping that up at this point, unless something else pops into my head, because, you know, I've kind of gone through the things that I think are the, you know, the big ones that I think are most important. Um, if anybody has anything, in, you know, we didn't talk about iron, et cetera, but if anyone has anything that really they would like to hear about, maybe they can ask you, but yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I'd be happy at this point to sort of branch out into more general topics, I think. Sweet. Okay. I love it. I'm looking forward to it. Now, listeners, I just want to remind everyone, if you're listening to this on the Spotify, you're going to see a little uh, 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 prompt at the bottom of the, the page that says, what did you think of this episode? Let us know your question in there. If you have a question for Dr. Pat, let us know there. We'll check it out. I'll send it over to Dr. Patricia Rennie and she will uh, do a whole segment on that. How does that sound, Dr. Pat? Great. <laughs> Love that. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your summer and uh, we'll see you in the fall. Absolutely. Take care, Paul. And uh, so we are in Virgo season and from one earth sign, Virgo, we're talking to our resident earth sign, Capricorn, Miss Jackie Talley. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. A little bit of a seasonal allergy going on, but uh, mm. otherwise I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. It is the season, right? This is the time where I'm like... Mm -hmm. I like this is the time where I realize, oh my God, summer's passing me by and then the seasonal allergy, but I'm like, oh, but going outside is just going to rip my face off. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, and every year I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the things that they recommend you to do. Like in the springtime, you should have a spoonful of um, local honey every day. It's supposed to help get you used to the seasonal allergy stuff that's going to happen later on. And you know, I never get around to it until it's too late. So here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> August. Middle of yes. August. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, how has your summer been? I mean, uh, down in Alabama, you guys have had some like pretty crazy weathery things happen. We have. We've had we've had uh, thunderstorms. We've had tornadoes and we've had the hottest weather in history. So it's been one of those kinds of summers where, you know, you have to really think every day about uh, what am I, what am I going to do to survive through the day mm -hmm. and be sure to listen to the weather report. And, um, and so I have just continued trying to do all my classes and show up and be healthy and move with a lot of people during the week. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let let's, let's, can we dive into that a little bit more? Because, um, you know, often we hear things like, you know, certain populations not to go outside when it's too hot, yada, yada, yada. What sort of things are, are you doing to make sure that you're like getting through that kind of heat? Also, could you let us know a uh, number of the temperature in, in Fahrenheit and I can convert it for the Celsius people? Oh, uh, you mean today, right now? 
It's, or like what's what's the 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 highest record uh oh temperature okay so we've had. had we've had 98 97 98 degrees fahrenheit with uh, uh almost the same um humidity and so the humidity is what makes it so unbearable and so some of the um buildings i go in they're air conditioned but the humidity is not controlled. Mm. So like this morning, I taught a class and I was totally wet when oh, I wow. left. The, the AC was on 68 and you walk in and it feels cold, but then you start moving and it's like you're in a, a sweat bath. Wow. So, um, so to answer your question, I just try to stay hydrated and I know I'm not as hydrated as you know, the guidelines would say, but I drink as much as I can to and still be able to function. I don't want to have to run out in the middle of class to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then I get enough sleep. And if I have a chance, uh, most days I'm able to take a little nap or sit down and put my feet up. Mm -hmm. And um, j just being aware of my energy. And if I'm feeling like, I'm getting beat down or getting too tired or too fatigued, then I need to stop and rest and mm. drink water and maybe eat, eat something, maybe some fruit, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you put anything in your water? No. Uh, well, I have some of those hydration packets that mm. I've used sometimes, but uh, I don't always have those. It's just mm -hmm. plain water. Yeah. I, um, from time to time, and again, I don't always think of this. I just know that it's beneficial, but like on those really hot days, I like to put a little sprinkle of like Himalayan salt or, or, um, sea salt in my water just to, you know, give the, those added, um, minerals, uh, yeah, that we often lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you a random question. Is salt or sodium, like, does it, do you factor that into your, like, you know, when you're eating something like, oh, I don't want to eat too much salt or mm -hmm. anything like that. Well, I do. I just know, I've been told that, you know, forever that mm -hmm. too much salt and you uh, retain fluid and blood pressure is an issue. Yeah. So um, I, I don't restrict myself that much because I don't really eat that much salt anyway. Right. Uh, I had a sandwich for lunch and there were chips on the side and I ate some of those mm -hmm. and I'll put salt on uh, tomatoes or salt on watermelon, but, oh, but that's fun, but I'm not a real uh, big salt person, but I think I get enough. I think. Yeah. I get enough. Yeah. See, I'm not a, like for me, salt, uh, like I, there can never be enough salt in any of the food that I eat, even like, well, although there are times lately that I have been noticing if something's too salty, but like sodium intake has never been something that I think of. And I don't know if it's like, I mean, okay, I do know what it is in the back of my mind. I think as somebody who moves for a living and does a lot of sweating in my day, I just figured what's the big deal. I'm just going to sweat it out anyway. So I don't like sit there counting and looking at the back of things like, Ooh, this is 68% of my daily intake of salt. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I just have it. And then, I mean, my blood pressure is okay. My, all that, those other things are fine. I just don't, I don't know. I don't pay attention to sodium intake, you know? Well, I, I'm, I don't too much. If I'm going to buy a can of soup and I look on the side and it says it has a thousand milligrams or whatever of sodium, then I'm probably not going to get that because that's way out of the ballpark. Right. But remember back in the old days, uh, <clears throat> football coaches used to give the players salt. I don't know what, uh, if it was you know, a chunk of salt or sprinkle of salt or, or put it in the water or whatever. But that was a common um, thing back in those days. Now, of course, uh, they need to take, I think it's uh, required that they take a water break and they drink a lot of Powerade and Gatorade. Mm. And, um, you know, and now they're making that without sugar. So that helps. Yeah. Uh, and and I try to keep some Gatorade or Pedialyte 
in the refrigerator in case I really get feel like I've gotten really dehydrated. Right, and, right. That's a good and, idea. And being older, uh, I think it's easier for older folks to become dehydrated. And one reason, there's probably many reasons. One reason is that we lose our thirst, our feeling of being thirsty. So we're mm. reaching for uh, a drink as often as we probably should. Yeah. I, I also remember hearing if you wait till you're thirsty to drink, you're already dehydrated. Yeah. And so that's why we want to like, you know, keep on yeah. drinking. I've heard that too. Yeah. yeah. So it's Virgo season. We just entered Virgo season today. And Virgo is all about, you know, getting things in order. Virgo likes things in a particular way. We were talking about this with, um, with uh, Crystal earlier. What, uh, what are you doing to get ready? Because for me, September is like reset time. I feel like it's the beginning of a new year, a new cycle, like that kind of thing. And I don't know if that's just from the old days of when I would go to school, we would start in September. Um, or if it's just like, you know, the, the energy that, that Virgo brings is like this reset kind of put things in place to carry on for the rest of the, uh, the year. So what, uh, what's your, what's your August, September kind of ritual? Like, how are you getting things ready for the fall? Well, I uh, also feel that urge to, you know, the going back to school and, and getting, everything cleaned up and organized and maybe getting clean clothes and school supplies. I love school yeah. supplies. I love school supplies too. <laughs> Honestly, I get so geeky about, I used to work in an office supply store when I was in high school yeah. because I loved it so much. Keep yeah, going. I love that. I love going to the office place and just looking around at everything. And I have to, you know, be real aware that, uh, you know, I really don't need that. I really don't need uh, <laughs> the jumbo size of markers or whatever. It right. Is. But then also because I was in school so long and I taught school for 20 something years. And um, I think that September, I just sort of feel like we're just getting ready to start something new. And mm. to me, that's that's a good feeling. And I don't care where you are in your life. You can always, you know, get ready to start something new. Yeah. So uh, uh, I don't think that I've started anything in particular as of today. But what I'm trying to do is keep things more in order day by day so that it doesn't pile up. Mm -hmm. And then this big you know, process to go through to straighten things out and discard and all of that. Right. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally get that. I mean, I haven't done anything major yet, but I know I feel like I'm leaning in that direction of, okay, it's going to, it's time to like clean up the yard because soon it's going to be harvest season to pull out the things from my garden. Um, and soon I'm going to have to pack up the patio furniture and get all that. So I like, I'm already having that in the back of my mind. Like how can I make that easier when it's time to do that? I also find that um, I like, I'm in this place right now where I'm resetting my, my daily habits and all of that stuff. So I feel like that's, you know, there's in the next couple of weeks, especially since the other thing, Crystal and I forgot to talk about this earlier, Mercury goes retrograde today, oh, 23rd God. of August. Yes. So oh. sun moves into Virgo. Mercury is already in Virgo. He's like, ah, I'm just going to slow down, turn around. So we got three weeks of that. Um, but that is a wonderful time to like really reevaluate our daily habits, our processes, everything that we're doing um, so that we can have a, you know, just be more efficient with our time. Um, so this is a, it's a time. So I can already feel myself starting to think yeah. in that direction. Of, You're getting me excited. About <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hit the office supply store, see what <laughs> new school supplies you need. Yeah. And, and go and start working on that big stack of paper that I've got uh, paper is my um, big problem right now. There's mm. just so much paper and um, and I just need to go through some things and decide what to keep and what to do with it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good times. I mean, I, the, I love, I love this, this, I love sweater weather. I love that we're getting into like the, I love summer. Don't get me wrong. 
but then there's just something about a nice crisp fall day. Now, I don't know if you have the same crisp fall days that we have here in Canada, but there's just something about you can start to feel that that change in the season is approaching. Um, and I just, I love it. Yeah, we do have some crisp fall days and there's just this feeling in the air or the, the way the sun is shining. You know, it's, it, it you, you I, I think that I could tell if you woke me up from a long winter's nap and took me outside or had me look out the window, I think I could tell that it's, whether it's summer or fall. Yeah. There's just yeah. a feeling in the air when you go outside. Totally, totally. Um, I mentioned, well, you know, I went camping a couple weeks ago. I'm going camping again in a couple weeks. And in that, you know, that, um, uh, in that time, like a one month difference, even that first weekend that I went, it was the first weekend in August, I could start to get a sense of, oh, you know, just in a couple of weeks, we're going to be at that point where the sun's going to go down at 830, where I was used to going down at like 902. Um, and you can feel that shift. And I, I don't know, I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, I love you so much. Do you have anything else that you want to share or talk about before we wrap it up for this month? Not particularly. I just hope that everything goes well with you and Claudia at CanFit Pro. I think that's going to be an exciting time. Thank you. I know I am very excited. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, Claudia today, uh, Claudia and I um, put all the final touches on our workshop and um, some other great things that we've got coming down the pipe. Um, and your name came up in conversation. I won't say anything here now, but I'll tell you a little bit about it later when we stop recording. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. Claudia's here. She'll come up and say hi in a minute. Um, but I love you so much. Thank you for our chat today. Thank uh, you. Happy Virgo season. We're celebrating all of that stuff. Uh, please keep me posted if you find any cool things in the office supply store when you go. <laughs> I will. <laughs> and we'll chat with you again next month. Love all you, Jackie. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that was it. What Don't you just love Jackie Talley? I love Jackie Talley. Yeah. So. She's amazing. She has been in this industry a long time. She's one of the smartest people that you'll ever meet in fitness. Mm -hmm. and, and she's very humble. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, we're right. so blessed to have her here because, well, we talk about all the things. Fitness, we talk about life, and uh, we have a good time. Claudia Miko. Yes. My sister in fitness. I love you so much. Love you too. Thanks for Thanks being here. Thanks for I actually, saving me. I never want you to leave. Stay here forever. I'm moving to um, Innisfil. I'm, <laughs> I'm moving to Canada. I need a, a green card. Or what, no, what are you guys, what are your cards called? Mm, are they green? Well, whatever color citizen, they Citizen, no, resident, permanent. Do you want to be a citizen? What do you want? I don't know. I could be a citizen. All right. Kind of fun. Well, Who wants to marry me? <laughs> I was just going to say, I we could get married. Daddy. We'll be the mind okay. body misfits. You could be my sugar daddy, but and, I'll still uh, need another daddy. Well, I mean, you're going to have to provide the sugar. I'll just be the daddy. You be the daddy. I need some sugar. <laughs> but I love you so much, Claudia. We've too. got our, our Mind Body Misfits episode coming up in two weeks. You're welcome. I will do that forever and Thank always. Um, but we have some great, exciting things coming up. Our next episode will be recorded live. Like yes. the two of us will be in person side by side in our next episode. So check that out. Um, and next week we got a bonus episode with Crystal Eves and the people of Way of the Sun. You'll hear all about it then. We love you so much. Any last words, Claudia? Why fit in? When you were born to stand out. <laughs> See you. Spiritfully Podcast is a Spiritful Production. Executive Producer, Paul Galoro. Co-Producers, Claudia Miko and Catherine Stilo. A big thank you and much love to you, the Living Spiritfully community, for liking, subscribing, sharing, and supporting this podcast. <laughs>